just turning in for your first time, maybe you've been here before, uh, I just shared with you, Andrew, um, a link to a Dropbox uh, posting. Um, it's one of my uh, cheat sheets that I've worked on for a while now so that everyone can kind of have a, if this is your first time, it'll help you kind of get through some of the kinks, a lot of shortcuts and some easy setups. Uh, if you want to post that, Andrew, that'd be great amongst the chats. If not, I can go ahead and post it later once we get going. Um, but until then, let's go ahead and uh, get this screen share going. All righty, let me make sure that everything came through. There we go. Looks good on my end, I believe. All righty. So uh, today we're going to be in Blender. Um, Working on a couple little bit more advanced things. Um, basically, Blender does a lot of different uh, tricks for you that allows you to expand and do things much quicker um, without necessarily the, uh, the use of a whole bunch of manual labor. Um, so we're kind of going to go over a couple of those little tricks um, and see what all you can do with these things. Uh, so getting into Blender first off, um, one of my favorites that I like to show people as we, uh, as we get started is this wonderful little uh, tool called Alt-R. Um, it's kind of the basics as we get into the modifiers. Modifiers are going to be a little bit more powerful, but Alt-R is still a really fun tool to work with. Um, so we're going to take this, uh, this default cube right here, and I'm just going to collapse it down to a single vertex. So uh, hitting W allows me to go into the Specials menu, um, which can let you merge everything at the center. Uh, and this is just going to take this cube and collapse it all the way down into one vertex. Um, you can see up here at the top of the screen, uh, right up here, if I can put a little box right there, it says vertex one. So we've only got one vertex here. Um, so if I was to take this vertex right here and uh, extrude it outwards. So what we're going to do real quick is make a, a little outline of a wine glass. So I'm just going to extrude this, kind of make, you know, the basic bottom, moving up to the stem, going, building this little nice cup as we go out. So just making a, not even a full, a full glass, just the outline of a half. It's a little blurry. Is that, uh, is that my end that I need to adjust to make it less blurry? Uh, I'm not sure. Is that okay? Let's see, how would I adjust that in the Discord? Hmm. Let's see, settings. Um, it might be simply the fact that I don't have Discord uh, full, like Discord Nitro, which is the paid version, so it's only doing 720. Yeah, it might be that. Um, so without going to Skype, this might be about as good as it's going to get at the moment. Um, but until we figured that out, so what we're going to do real quick, um, is, so we've got this nice little, uh, this wire frame half, uh, piece of a, a cup right here. So what Alt R is going to do is going to rotate everything and kind of create mesh materials as it goes. So from the top view with, uh, with the cursor in the middle here, I'm gonna hit Alt-R, and you can see it makes all this data right here. So over on this little side panel over here, we've got uh, all the different uh, steps as we're gonna go through this. If you were to click off, this, that whole panel goes away, so you wanna make sure that you do it and don't uh, step away from this before you do it. So if we're gonna do, uh, do a full cup, we need a 360 degrees, so go ahead and punch that in. And then if we want more steps, we can knock that up to 32 or so, um, give us a little bit more data to work with. And so it's a really simple, really easy tool to work with. And there we've got a, we've got a little goblet, um, super, super simple. And it's, it's much more uh, than just that. Um, let's see if I can, no, I think it's gonna let me do everything else. But, um, and just collapse everything. If we were to take this all again, um, and go ahead and extrude something out, just so we can kind of see 
to demonstrate a point. If you were to move the cursor from here and then rotate it, uh, it's actually going to rotate everything relative to your cursor, not just. Oh wait, that's why. It's, uh, it's not just spinning it around the center point. It's actually spinning it around this cursor. Um, so wherever that cursor is, it's where it's going to be. And you can actually update that before you step away from this. Um, it's just a really cool little tool to use. Uh, a lot of different tips, a lot of different ways you can use it. And uh, depending on how far we get, we might use this later. But anyways, so now let's go ahead and dive into some modifiers. Um, so for anybody who's, you, who's a, a programmer looking to get into Blender for you know, the first time, uh, the idea of a array is not something that's foreign to you. Um, so, but for anyone else, basically an array, uh, for lack of better describing, is a row of boxes. It's a, 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 a series of entities that allows you to have the data within it. So, but the way that, uh, that Blender is going to look at arrays in this particular instance, looking at modifiers, is uh, duplications of a single object over whatever you want um, in terms of space. So if we just take this simple cube right here and start adding on um, an array modifier, you can notice right there, it's, now we've got what looks like uh, a twice as long cube, but it's actually two cubes. Um, and over here, we've got some settings that we can play with. So let's, uh, let's hide all these guys. You can, uh, this panel over here hides with T, and this one over here hides with N. Um, so now we've got all these settings we can work with. And so there's two basic offsets that we've, we've got to work with, which is relative and constant. Um, we'll talk about relative first, because that one's a little bit easier. So uh, we're going to take this up a little bit so you can kind of see there actually is a distinction between the two of these. Um, and so you've got your, your count up here. We can give as many or as little as we want of them. And the idea with the, the relative offset is no matter what I edit in this cube, it's going to keep this spacing right here the same um, in terms of, uh, yeah. So, so you'll notice, and this is where modifiers get really powerful, is I change one thing about one object, and it updates it in all of them. I didn't. Didn't have to tab over, move anything else. It's it's just an automatic update in all of them. Um, you can see this this uh, piece is always making it that same relative offset where it's always going to be set apart the same the same distance roughly. It's 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 all relative to how big the object is itself. Whereas constant offset, if we're to do a constant offset of one point two, which is the same as the the relative offset, you'll notice that it's it's a little bit different, so we kind of see here. So instead of uh, updating and changing its location as it goes, it's, which is what the relative does, the constant, uh, well, that's what we right now, the constant keeps your, all of your bodies, oh, so we got both, there we go. The constant keeps all of the bodies in the same place, but allows you to, to edit on the fly. Um, different uses for both tools, um, but this is a really fun one to work around with. Uh, so we're just going to kind of give an overview of everything as we kind of look at modifiers and see where we can go from there. We're, uh, we're going to end up building a staircase towards the end of all this. Um, and you'll kind of see how uh, we, can, we can use different modifiers to, uh, to build stairs. So. Uh, We'll, we'll get there though in a bit. So let's go ahead and throw out another cube here, just a clean start. Um, one that we talked about uh, at SimFest, for any of you who are from SimFest, um, was the mirror modifier. Uh, so mirror modifiers are great in that it allows you to have uh, changes across your axes um, that are the same. Let's see, where is my, there we go. Um, the thing to note about mirror modifiers is that uh, it's not it's relative to the axis, but it's not relative to the zero zero point. It's actually relative to your origin. So this little uh, dot is where Blender sees your object actually at. Um, sure, there's a ton of mesh data that has everything, but that 
that has one specific point in the 3D space, which is your origin. Um, that's what everything is relative to here. So uh, let's say if I move this back to back to even right here, just so you can see it better. Um, so we're mirrored across the x-axis, or and so uh, if I was to take this and move the whole object, it allows me to uh, the whole thing still stays relative to that that origin point, not to the, the axis, axis itself, no matter where these go. I can still scale this and move this, and it's going to be snapping to that piece. Um, you can do multiple axes. That's, that can create some, some really fun things, allows you, and again, th th this is where modifiers have their power, is that everything updates uh, across all the different objects. Um, so it allows you to to do more than one thing, uh, make everything even um, and very simple. Um, so, let's see where was my right here. Um, the other one, and I know I'm kind of flying through these, but these these are uh, a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna just kind of touch on the ideas of them in the beginning. Uh, the last one is gonna be that we're looking at for now is a, a boolean modifier. So if anybody knows a uh, Boolean set notation, that's what we're looking at here, basically. Um, so what we're actually going to do is right now is a uh, carve a chip out of this cube by using this sphere right here. Um, so basically, when you when you create the point and when you allow the, them two to intersect with each other, and then put a modifier on one, and the order actually matters a lot here. Um, you want the modifier to go on the shape that gets cut out, uh, and then the you want it to point to the shape that's doing the cutting. Um, so we're going to add modifier right here and point it to the sphere. Um, if you look, everything magically disappears. We don't want that. There's three different uh, options that you have here, and if I remember right, we want the difference. Um, so if we were to take this and hide this right now, you'll see, presto, this little piece is gone, which is really cool. Um, and if we were to uh, to move this around, you'll actually see that the uh, the whole piece keeps updating where um, where the cut's coming out of. Um, if we hide that, you can see everything changes. So it allows you to do some really cool things. Um, can greatly simplify a lot of modelings that you didn't necessarily need. Now, you, and you do uh, if you want. If you're very concerned about um, about faces and such, uh, you do have to be aware that this doesn't make the cleanest face. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this modifier and go into edit mode, and you can see it's uh, all the faces are there, but it's not necessarily the cleanest. So sometimes you might have to go back and clean this up, but um, it definitely can give you a lot of shortcuts uh, overall. So, um, and just from here, for anyone who's uh, who's stuck with this series the whole way, um, we can real quick model that. Uh, I think we have enough time. Yeah, we can real quick model the the table that we started out with, uh, the little um, picnic table that we used. But we're going to use it with do it with modifiers this time. And you can see quickly how much uh, can go on um, without us doing all that work by hand in the same way. Um, so let's see, in the beginning, we started out with our little tabletop. And we're going to take this and scale it, it by four. Scale x, oops. Scale x four times. There we go. Scale Y, I'll we'll just do two, actually, but you don't actually need that. Um, let's take this, so instead, we're actually, let's make it, uh, let's actually do like the planks like a top would have. So if we go and take this array modifier right here um, and give us, us a little offset, now we can actually have the top of our table. and it's all very consistent. We don't have to worry about anything. 
like gonna make it look a little bit more symmetrical, but it's it's done. It's easy. Uh, it allows us to do a lot really fast, um, which is what's great about these modifiers. Um, so, boom, we got that done. Um, anytime you want to work with all the other faces, you actually have to hit apply. And if, if I click it now, it should air out on me. Yeah, modifiers have to be applied in object mode, not edit mode. Um, so tab back out and hit apply. Now I can actually work on each of these individually and it's going to let me update them accordingly. Um, but if, so let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and add the legs real quick. Grab this, move it up, scale Y. If we're to take this, we're going to do a really simple version of this. Um, don't want to take up too much time with it. But just so you can kind of see the difference uh, between the, the different uh, buildings. So we took this, and now with these four legs, we can go ahead and just add a mirror modifier. And as long as our origin is still in the middle, uh, boom, we've got four legs. So really simplifies a lot of things, uh, makes it much more consistent. If I move one, it's going to move all of them. Uh, which is both a blessing and a curse. Um, and so no, if you want to have different, uh, different pieces going on, so like, for example, this has uh, symmetry in both the X and Y axis. So if I take this and move it, it's got, it's got essentially it's got a duplication times two, so it's, it's squared. Um, if I wanted to add another piece in here, I'm also going to have of itself. Uh, so I, if I was to, let's say, add the little sidebar panel right here, I wouldn't want to, to just add it right here. I'll get something. There we go. Um, I'll probably actually want to make it into its own object. Oops. Let's put it in the center. There we go. I'll simplify some things. Make it its own object. Come on. And... Uh, and go from there. So that way, when we put this in, you know, get for us this having this sidebar, uh, which is what we ended up putting the, the seats on last time. Um, I don't have four of it duplicated. I only have the two. So that allows you to do it like so. Um, and from here, uh, a lot of times when you start using modifiers, sometimes you'll end up with multiple objects, uh, which isn't necessarily desirable. At some point, you're going to want them in a single. Uh, so if you apply all the different modifiers you have, uh, you can select everything um, that you're working with, and then hit Control J, and it's going to join them all to a single mesh. Um, and from here, everything's just like we had the first time, uh, the ability to, to manipulate everything individually in a single object, which is great because now it all acts and responds like we like we wanted to. Um, cool. So let's actually look at like combining some modifiers. If, if anyone in chat is uh, or out there is watching and has any questions, please shout out. Um, I know I'm going fast, but I'm always willing to, to detour and to explain something either in more depth or to uh, just answer any questions you might have because um, Blender can be kind of intimidating so definitely definitely shout out if you have anything um, so let's go ahead and work with the idea of making a uh, a staircase because um, this can be kind of fun so from here <laughs> let's see uh, any in-person workshop happening soon um I'm not sure yeah uh, we might have something at siege I don't know what what Andrew's got cooked up in his in his head. Um, I'm always willing to talk about anything, but uh, I'm not sure of any, any Blender specific workshops directly in the near future. Um, but anyway, so I was working as I was talking. Uh, basically, I just took this cube, and instead of having it a fully default cube, I uh, just started manipulating it down a little bit. Um, and uh, Gregory Art, you should definitely go to Siege because it's going to be super awesome. Um, and even if there isn't a Blender workshop, there's going to be a lot of other really good, really good workshops and talks going on that weekend. All right, so let's go ahead and take this uh, 
and give ourselves a little bit of a wider stir to work with. Um, so, and here's something that, uh, that I do want to touch on. Um, there's an idea that you can do in Blender, and I'm pretty sure any other software is going to give you this. Uh, but it's the, it's the idea of loop cutting. Um, so if you hit Control R, you see this nice little pink line um, pop up, and the loop cut is actually going to give us, if I first, if I left click, it's going to confirm that I want one loop cut, and then I'm just going to place it wherever I want. So if I left click again, it's going to place it exactly there. Um, if I do, if I left click and then right click, it's going to center it, and uh, if I hit Control R, um, there we go. I hit Control R and don't click yet, and scroll up and down. You can see that it gives you a lot of cuts. So this is a good way to. It's, it's all even. Um, it's a good way to get a lot of geometry if you want to do a lot of little things, um, giving yourselves more of a contour, uh, perhaps. But that's not what we're doing with right now. I just wanted to show you that because what we're doing with this loop cut is we're going to give ourselves that little lip that uh that stairs often have. So we put a loop cut in. I'm gonna do that again because that was really quick fast. Uh, put a loop, cut it on the side, and pull it all the way up. And if I hit control, it's gonna snap it right there where I want it. And then select this whole front face, and I'm gonna extrude it outwards in the x-axis, so that way we have that little that little tick, like most stairs do. Um, cool. So uh, just making it look a little bit better. There we go. So from here. What we can do is apply and uh, take an array modifier and throw it on here, and uh, it's going to be a little quirky because we're going in the, the x or negative in the x axis. But if we do a minus one in the x, um, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, no, nope, that's actually what we wanted. And then um, positive in the Z axis, so let's just see, let's see what it looks like at one. So now you can see if we take this up, so we've got some stairs. So we can actually bring this down a little bit. I think a uh, 0 0.7 is pretty good. That's that's a perfectly even spot. Um, so now it's pretty sweet. You've got some simple stairs that we can we can go with. Um, and if you ever mess around with it, there's a lot of cool settings you can do in here. Um, fit curve. Is really fun but quirky, so be warned. Uh, but fit length is really simple, where just whatever length you want. Um, if you just wanted to cover six units, it's going to fit as many of that object as it can within within six Blender units. Um, easy way to make things consistent um, as well. If, uh, if I was to take this object and scale it down, uh, it's going to it should. Oh no, it's not doing it the way I thought it would. Oh. Well. Um, all right, so if we've got some simple stairs, let's go ahead and add on some uh, some handrails. So with the handrails, so we're going to make a different object because we want these mirrored on both sides, and the modifiers we want to be separate. Um, we don't need mirrors of these steps on top of them themselves. So let's go ahead and add a new object. I'm going to go into wireframe mode just so I can see this a little bit better, and uh, pull this up. Scale it in the Y, get us some nice little thin barriers to work with. Again, there we go, and uh, slide this over. Just getting this to look kind of nice enough. That looks pretty good. Yep. Alrighty, so with this piece right here, we can take it and add on the array modifier like we already had. Um, and if we uh, simulate the same, do the same things that we did on the last one. Uh, it goes negative one, and then 0.7 up. Uh, we're just going to do fixed count for now because that's easy enough. Fixed count, that's fine. There we go. Um, so we've got the array on here, and you can add multiple modifiers. It's really nice. Um, in many cases, the order of modifiers does matter. Uh, in this case, we're adding an array in the, that array, which is basically the same thing as adding a, as putting on the mirror and then adding the array. It's five times two is ten, and two times five is ten. You're getting the same result. Uh, it's just what order you're doing it in. 
Um, but in this case, we're going to mirror it across the y-axis. And so you can see, uh, I believe the y, yeah. Um, and from there, we have our nice little hand, uh, little uh, pieces going up. Uh, we do need a handrail. And this is where things can get a little tricky. Um, because there's not a really good way to do this uh, simply in in Blender um, at the based off what the way I'm doing it, just using modifiers. Uh, we can try to do something. Uh, we'll see if it works. It it works sometimes when I'm testing it. Um, so we'll 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 gamble and see what we can do here. So I'm going to take this and we're going to build this as the the handrail. Um, Take this, and now we've got a really tiny cube here. That's all we're that's all we're working with. So if we were to take this, and uh, we're gonna make a array modifier, and we're actually gonna make a path. So curves in Blender, um, people use them a lot in animation. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with them. In this case, we're using the very, very simplest version of, of a curve in Blender, um, which is going to be a, basically a two-point path, um, just point A to point B. Uh, when you create a path in, in the beginning, it actually has, uh, I think, like five points in it. So we're going to take out these middle points, and if you hit uh, X, it's going to delete them. Now you can see we only have two points. Uh, very, very simple line. Um, and we're using it for a very, very simple purpose. Uh, the curves, uh, there's, I mentioned earlier, there is this idea where you can uh, fit your array to the length of the curve. Um, so if we say fit curve, and it's gonna, it, we, nothing changed because it, we have a pointer that it has to point to. Um, if, you've, if you're familiar with Unity, this interface is probably very intuitive to you in, in that regard. So we can click and it's going to give us all the options for the different curves that we can select. Um, and you can see it made a whole bunch of points there. So if we take this and change that, it's, uh, let's see here, it's going to make that larger or smaller based on how many we have, which is great. So now we have to get this to the if we want, what we can do is, is take this path and move it up here and make it go from the bottom of the stairs to the top of the stairs. Um, but uh, we need to make this snap to that first. So we've got the array modifier, and now we're gonna actually have to put on a curve modifier, um, which again is gonna be just like last time, we have an object that it has to deform to. And let's see if I can get this right. Um, might have to do it this way. Trying to get this to do right. Let's see. There we go. I think I just had to put it back at the center. Um, and it allows it to, to snap better and, and play well with friends. Um, so from here, let's go into the wireframe mode so we can see this a little bit better. So here I'm actually in edit mode on the curve, not on the cubes. Um, I'm gonna take the whole curve, I'm gonna grab it, and put the bottom point down here, and the top point we're gonna grab and move up here. Um, and we're gonna take this whole thing from there, we can slide it over, and now, there we go, that looks pretty decent. Um, now we can just take this, and throw on a mirror modifier. Make sure it's on the right axis. Oh, nope, this is the wrong object. I'm on the on the curve. I don't want the curve mirrored. I want the I actually want the handle itself to be mirrored. So let's go ahead and throw it on there. Boom, there we go. That's looking better. Sweet. So now we've got that. So that's the basic idea of what we want. Um, there's a lot of different cool tricks you can do with this. Um, I don't know how well this is gonna, is gonna play, but if I was to take this and want to uh, build a little handrail, kind of go around, I'm just extruding this point, and it allows you to add in more data, uh, gives it a little bit of a cleaner finish. Um, and all of this, again, is relative to 
my little cube that I built in the first place. So I believe it's this last cube. So if we'd actually edit this one cube, take it, maybe make them a little, uh, a little shorter. You're going to see that that affects the whole piece. Um, and some of these modifiers, uh, if you, let's say, if you wanted to edit it, you see how it snaps back in, um, which isn't necessarily uh, conducive to a good workflow. You can take this and over in these settings, you'll see you've got uh, all these settings. Basically, the way Blender works, if you ever see this, it's is this going to be shown in the rend whenever you render it? Is it going to be visible in the editor? Is it going to be uh, visible in edit mode and then uh, working in it with it in, in the editor as well? So basically, if you want to see all this as you're working on it live, just start pretty much apply all of these and you're going to be able to see it. Um, it's not always going to be what you want, but it'll give you a much better idea of what's kind of going on sometimes. Um, so we're going to take this. Yeah, that looks good from there. So we can, if we scale this down, you can see the top part actually changes its size. And if we scale it to the y-axis as well, you can see the whole thing kind of starts to get a little bit better. Scale in the x. There we go. So now that curve's starting to look a lot smoother because we just put in a whole bunch more of these subdivisions. Um, so the more we put it in, the, the cleaner those curves are going to look. So let's see if we take this and uh, let's just go ahead and extrude a little bit more. So now that we've got a kind of a finish on both ends. Um, with this little gap right here, you can take your points just very simply, uh, making sure that it looks good and apply it all up. So now we've got a basic idea for a staircase, which looks fairly good. Um, if you want to do something interesting, what we can actually do is uh, Sometimes you'll see some creative banisters where you've got some holes drilled into the sides of these boards. So uh, to add on everything what we've already done so far, um, let's go ahead and add in a cube. Uh, let's add in a cube at the center point. So shift C to point back at zero, zero, zero. Add shift A to add a cube. We're gonna take this whole thing, just scale it down. So it's really tiny, point one is what I just did. Uh, let's make it even tinier so we can actually put a little bit of something in here. Actually, no, you know what? We're going to get fancy. We don't need cubes. We use too many cubes. Let's, let's build it with a cylinder. Now we can get super fancy. It'll look nice. Um, going to rotate it on its side so that way when we punch a hole through, it'll actually look like a circle, not just like a square because that defeats the purpose. Scale this thing down really tiny. Um, if we grab this, so now if you look right there, just kind of center it. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, if we take this whole thing and move it to where our point is, I'm going to make it a little longer just because if you think about a hole punch, a hole punch is uh, bigger than the piece of paper that it's going through. So that way you don't have to really worry if it actually went through or not all the way. Um, so from here, let's just get creative with it. So Sure, let's, uh, let's add an array on it. Um, maybe we'll just do like a relative of two up or something. Is that up? Oh, it's still got the one on it. There we go. Trying to figure out why it's going that way. Why is it going that way? Did I rotate it in the wrong mode? Yeah. Um, so here's something that if you ever run into in Blender, this is what happened. Um, so if you notice, what I did was I tried to give myself a relative offset of two in the Z axis, which is this blue axis. It should be going up. It did not go up. It in fact went sideways. Um, the reason why is because this is, these modifiers are applied at the object level. Um, and I'm looking at it at the, the mesh level basically is what I'm thinking of it in. Um, but if I come over here to this inside me, side uh, menu and look, you're going to see, I have a rotation here. Um, and so this relative offset is being applied 
but it's going through this rotation as well. So it is being applied up. It's just I'm rotated 90 degrees, which makes me, my up go sideways. To clear this out by hitting zero, uh, you see that it actually is up. Um, instead of hitting zero, you can also just hit Alt-R. Alt-R undoes re rotation. If you're familiar with all the other ones, uh, G for grab for moving it around. Alt-G undoes that, puts it back at zero, zero, zero. Alt-S puts all your scales back to zeros. Um, so that's that's basically what happened. I can uh, get around this by actually making my rotations in edit mode instead of in object mode. So now you'll see I have two that are going the right direction, which is exactly what I wanted in the first place, uh, which is good. So let's see from here. Uh, let's get creative. Let's just scale it, make it a little bit more exciting. Um, that looks kind of good right there. So we can take this. Um, and it's, it doesn't matter where it is because this whole punch is going straight through the whole object. Uh, remember, if we want to apply a Boolean, we have to apply the Boolean onto the object that's getting cut, and then it's pointing at the object that's doing the cutting. Um, so we have this modifier right here. Go ahead and add this Boolean. Um, have it point to the cylinder, and should be leave a difference yeah if we hide that you'll see boom it's great but if you notice none of the other ones have it which is really sad because we went through all that effort um, and now it doesn't have it because like we said earlier order matters so if you look I've got an array modifier the mirror and the boolean so basically what it's actually doing um, is that, hey, Epic Steve, we're just getting into Blender and looking at modifiers. Um, uh, feel free to ask any questions if you've got any. Um, basically, the idea of what we're going with here, uh, what's happening, the reason why this hole's not getting here. First, it creates the array of, of five pieces. Um, so it, it, it's going to create this array first. Here, we'll actually uh, let's turn these all off so we can see it kind of in action. So basically what's happening is first it creates the array of five, and then it turns on the mirror modifier, and then it turns on the hole. So the hole only applies to the first one. But if we were to take this, these little arrows up and down right here allow you to recognize them. If we move this Boolean modifier up one, first it's going to, now it's in front of that mirror, and if we move it up one more, it's going to be in front of the mirror, in front of the array. And so now the, the piece applies to all of them. Um, so like I said earlier, sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it definitely does, because uh, you have to know what's going on. Um, but this is the nice part, too. So none of the data is actually, uh, none of those mesh pieces are actually here until, we, uh, until you apply these modifiers, um, which if you want to keep working with it like this, it's great. If not, um, you can always apply these modifiers and get into the actually change things um, on your own. So uh, one other thing I would like to do before we get going, and this is a trick that I actually kind of learned when I was prepping for this, which is really cool, because um, I wanted to make this whole, uh, this whole staircase kind of curve, um, which would be great, but it's not the easiest. There's, there's different ways you can do it, and none of them are, are super, super great. Uh, but the best one that I found, um, is going to give us an, an empty object to actually control the transform itself. Um, so if you're familiar with animations, you, you kind of you kind of know what I'm talking about with with bones and armatures uh, controlling points. That's not necessarily the date, the the mesh itself. Um, so what we're going to do here is. Uh, I apologize if I messed this up. I haven't done it too many times um, against a new trick. But what we're going to do here is go into add and going to add a new empty. Really, whatever empty you add doesn't matter. It's just how it re represents itself um, inside of Blender. It's still going to be an empty. It's just what's the mesh on the screen and the editor that you're looking at. Uh, so from here, let's just go ahead and add in a sphere. So it's going to give us these these little axes, so you can kind of see when it, when we rotate it, you're going to be able to see that it's actually rotated um, and, and everything with that. So it's at zero, 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 which is important because all of our changes are going to, anything that's offset is going to be relative to 
how far this is away from zero 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 and uh how far it's it's out of standard essentially out of its standard orientation scaling and rotation um so what we're going to do let's uh let's just actually hide all these guys for now just so we can kind of simplify these things um we're just going to work with the stairs in the beginning and uh so right here in the array modifier um we've got this little thing called object offset so if we click that and have it point to our empty that we just created uh, and turn this off now you'll see that there's nothing here um, but basically what it is is instead of using one of these constant or relative offsets it's it's using the xyz of the empty itself uh, so if i come on to this empty and move this empty you see everything magically appears so it allows you to have uh, customization without actually having to go into that fire um, and you can have multiple different things point to this empty which is really good too um, so if we were to take this let's let's set it up how we used to have it so is it minus one and a minus or a positive point seven so that's what we've got right there and now if we were to take this and let's rotate it in the z-axis you'll see the whole thing magically moves which is really really cool um, this allows you to do some really cool things, uh, and everything is, is updated live. It makes it uh, so much simpler in a lot of regards. Um, so if I was to take this and kind of to match these points up, um, it allows you to do some really, really cool things. Uh, let's go back now. Um, we unhide, let's hang on, there we go. If you go back here and unhide everything, oh, I forgot that guy was there earlier. Um, So you just go ahead and hide that back. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, there we go. That's what I want. I'm just putting these back to zero so we can we can see everything well. Um, snap to grid. There we go. So now let's go ahead and uh, pull these guys back. Um, and if we were to do the same thing here on this, go ahead and turn on the object offset, or first turn off the constant, turn on the object so you can see it, so it does the same thing. And again, if you were to take this, and rotate it in the Z, oops, rotate in the Z, not in the other axis, you're gonna see those all kind of map to the same spot. And it's a little quirky right now, it's, it's not exactly what we want. Um, I think I probably messed something up in there. It's actually probably the way in which all of these modifiers are applied. Yeah, let's let's check on that real quick. Rotating the Z, fifteen degrees. Um, but change the order of the modifiers, and look, there it goes. So again, modifier order matters, um, and it's not going to play well with this uh, with this curve modifier um, on this guy right here. I don't believe it will. Uh, we can try. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna like it so much. Um, yeah, no, it's it's not gonna do what we want here. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, from here, you you would be able to, you can do this in different ways. Uh, you would just have to probably append it to one of these guys and make it go around. Um, but there's different ways to to skin the skin yeah, to skin the the cat. Um, and. Um, while we're here, because we do have a little bit of time, um, if anyone has any questions, uh, go ahead and shout them out. If not, I'm just kind of going to touch on rendering, because we haven't really looked at rendering a whole lot yet. Um, so we might as well, uh, since we've got a little bit extra time. Um, if you have any questions, Andrew, I know you've always got good questions, even if uh, the viewers don't. Um, but I'm going to look at rendering a little um, just, just Actually, I think rendering is about the best thing you could show now. That's uh, one other issue gotcha. in general. Is the good renders. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so basically, everything is relative to the camera right here when it comes to rendering. Uh, if you hit zero, um, you're going to snap to your camera, um, and you can move this just like you would in any other object using the widgets or using uh, your grab commands. Um, and rotation as well. 
Um, but if you want to sim go really simple, uh, you can hit Shift F. And it's going to let you fly around. It's using a command similar to uh, any video game with WASD and um, mouse movement. So you're able to move this around and kind of position it to where you want. And then if you left click, it's going to submit that. And that's where it's going to stay for it from, uh, whenever you go from there. Um, and you've got your different lights. Um, lights can be different types. Uh, you've got Blender has the basics of what you need: um, points, sun, spot, and hemisphere lights. Um, if you were to take these and populate your area, uh, I'm not a big person in terms of uh, photos. Who knows about? I know there's different points, uh, different types of lighting schema that you can set up. Um, Photographers are the ones to really ask about that. Uh, but basically, you want to you want to kind of light up the dark spots. Um, but you also do what you do what's good for your scene. Um, sometimes you need those shadows. Um, and I believe I've touched on this in the past. But uh, if you've got your inner, actually, um, before we get into this, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. Um, let's go ahead and see what we've got right here and go ahead and render this out. If you hit F12 or I'm not sure where it is. I think there's a render. Yeah, render image, but it's uh, F12 is the shortcut key. Oh, we still got that ball hiding around there. Where is he? Um, when you hide objects, they don't miss, they always show up in the render even though they're hidden from the scene. Uh, so if you see this right here, boom, he's there. And that uh, that cylinder is also still there. Um, so remember, you've got is it is it viewable and seen, and that's actually is it editable. I'm up here in this. If you can see me up in this corner, I'm pointing to up here. Sometimes you can't follow the mouse. Um, so is it viewable? Is it editable? Isn't it in the render? So we're going to turn this off from the render uh, and from viewing in the editor. So now, if we were to render that, it should be much better. Cool. But you can see these awful shadows. Um, and sure, we can throw in another light, which is kind of where it was earlier. Uh, if I duplicate this and just move another light over here and re-render it, yeah, it's going to look better, but it's still got these hard shadows. Um, you can change the shadows uh, on the lights. You can change the shadows. But if you want a very simple version um, without messing with the two lot, the two, too many settings, um, if you turn on the ambient occlusion, and my magic number is 0.05, uh, that's going to soften all these shadows up and allow the light to bounce around a little bit more. It should have. What happened? Why did it not? Let's see. Yeah, it's still it's still better than it is with off. Um, yeah, you raise a great point. It's always important for the artist to think in terms of the final scene, the final usage of these art pieces. Yeah. When you're in this and place. this is one. And this is one thing too that's important and, and we'll touch on when we talk about Blender integrating with Unity is that you can make this right here look gorgeous. And if you get, when you bring it into Unity, all your lighting data is going to be pretty much lost. Um, so especially if, if you're doing using Blender with game design, um, it's usually much better to not worry about your actual lighting in here as, and just work on your lighting once you get into Unity. Um, the materials and, and textures you can do a lot with in here, but uh, when you start pushing everything over to Unity is where everything's going to really come together. Um, and uh, that's, that's really where the important stuff is going to happen. Um, so, uh, and if, if, you, if you wanted uh, to, this, this is actually something that is, important to me because it took me forever to figure this one out when I very, very began. But uh, down here in the bottom cor corner, you've got your save as your image. And you can just save it out to wherever you want. Um, so that way you can keep track of all of your renders uh, that you've been working towards. Um, so, but yeah, that's, that's really about all I've got. Um, I know I left a little bit of time here for some, any questions that we might have. Um, How much will it hurt when you fall down the stairs? Um, well, at the moment, not so much, but, uh, but if I was to go, let's see, that's only a flight of five stairs. That's, that's really not too bad. Um, Double but you know, we can, yeah, you can, you can make it a lot more painful. <laughs> so you, it's, it's, there that's we the go. nice part. Yeah. Now we're talking uh, damage. 
Yeah, everything here is is able to be edited on the fly. Like that's that's what makes this great. Um, let's see, I, I can get this path back in here. I should be able to grab this guy and move everything up. So instead of you know modeling this out by hand and you know making sure I copy and pasted it everything really nice, it's all right there. It's all really simple. Um, so this is really where a lot of the power sits at in Blender is being able to use your modifier as well. Um, and there's some other ones that we didn't even get to touch on. Uh, some are really, really cool. Um, and actually, uh, just because we've got a little bit of time, um, this is one that I discovered just today even. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Um, first, I'm going to save this in case this messes up. Um, I'm sure that's fine. Yeah. Um, stream three. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and apply all of these modifiers. Um, whoops. Also note this point. In, point in order. Uh, apply modifiers from the top down, not from the bottom up. Um, otherwise, bad things happen. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and apply all these modifiers. Um, basically, I'm just getting to the point real quick where all of this is a single mesh. Uh, so we've taken all the modifiers. Um, so now if you look at all of these individually, this is all one mesh, that is one, and those guys, there we go, are one. Um, so we're going to combine all of these into a single mesh. Yeah, there we go. So they're all highlighted. Um, hit Control J, and it's going to make them all into one object. So if we like named it up here, we've got stairs. Um, so again, this is one that, that I just found today, but if you take this modifier right here for build, um, basically what it is is an animation modifier. Um, and if you've ever you know seen anything where it does like uh, pixelated buildings of uh, building out meshes as it goes, it's basically what this is. Uh, so if I was to hit play, um, let's make this a little bit longer maybe, uh, do like, 50 is actually where it was, um, so we'll change it here. Um, if I was to hit play on this, uh, you can see it's actually building out the whole piece, and it'll build this one by one for the whole entire thing, um, which is pretty cool. But from here, if we take this and randomize it, and now hit play again, it'll actually build out the whole piece. Uh, in this animated mode. And you can take this animation, you can bake it out, import it into blend, into Unity. Um, this is just, it's just super cool to me because it's, there's just so much going on that you just don't even have to do. And it's really, really is the whole point of the modifiers is um, giving the, the power to the artist where you don't have to do all this tedious work. Um, and it really opens up a lot of, a lot of possibilities. Um, and you can get super creative with it, which is what's what what makes it so fun. And I think it's so. especially important for early artists, folks who are early in their art careers as well as early in level design careers. One thing I always re recommend is for early levels, do something simple. If early art, do something simple. So catwalks, girders, these type of stairs, repeat, do the art over and over. But you can put them in interesting position, interesting ways, and start learning mm -hmm. some of the intricacies both of art development and of level design yeah that's very true um if anybody's looking for some external resources uh and hasn't looked much into blender you'll you'll find there's this guy um oh, i'm gonna get flack for forgetting his name uh oh man it's I, i'm i'm remembering your name andrew it's it's not uh, andrew price is his name i believe uh he's an australian guy um one of the best blender gurus on the internet uh, but in his introduction videos, he doesn't, you know, build a car or something fancy. He builds an anvil yeah. because an anvil allows you to understand some really core concepts of of what he, you know, he does a little bit more advanced than what we're doing in his basic. But it's it's understanding some really core concepts of how you're building shapes and you know what you do with loop cuts and, and subdividing your surface. Um, so it's really interesting, you know, you don't have to do, like you're saying, Andrew, you don't have to do something super complex. Start with something very simple. Um, in all these tutorials, you know, we try to do something simple so you can understand the core concepts. Um, so the, the complexity doesn't get in the way of learning what's actually going on. Uh, so. 
That's excellent. Last chance for questions, everybody. I think it was another excellent presentation by Blue Hat Zach. Thank you very much. Well, let everybody know that I have indeed updated our Patreon. As I mentioned, we now have a $1 early access pass, which gives you early access to videos like this one before they go live for everyone on YouTube. So we take this video, we pull it down, we make it private, we edit it up, make sure it's all right, and then we put it back up on YouTube. But our Patreons at the early access level, that's just $1 a month, get first crack at it. Now at higher levels, you get access to entire videos that nobody else will see, that are Patreon only, and there are quite a few of those already. But uh, check out our Patreon, we've added new things to it. Follow us on Twitter at ggda underscore org, follow Blue Hat Zach at at Blue Hat Zach. Uh, get on our Facebook page, join the Augusta chapter of the GGDA. And uh, thank you very much, Zach, for another excellent presentation. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was a lot of fun. All right. And uh, have a good evening, and we will see you here next month. Take care. Take care, everybody. <laughs>